So existence of sin does not make you sinner. Can I hear one amen? What does it mean? Existence of sin and existence of death did not make Adam powerless. Existence of sin in the beginning did not make any difference for Adam when he was living in the glory. Existence of sin did not really make matter to the, uh, Adam when he was walking with the Lord and talking with the Lord. Because it is dead and it has got no life, it has existed but it has got no power on him or anyone. Amen. Hallelujah. When God saved you and bring you into this world, there is an existence of sin, but the sin does not touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only when you activate the sin, you will become the sinner. I I beseech pardon from all of you for this example and including Josh because this example only can make you understand not you even a believer how to activate the power of sin. Imagine he's a prostitute. Okay? He's in this world and going, coming and not activating that. Am I reaching you? Existence of brother, our existence of debauchery, our existence of adultery, existence of fornication, existence of malice, existence of anything that's spoken in the world. It does not make any difference to me when I visit this world because I'm more coming by that. Hallelujah. By the power of the resurrection. It is existing, but it doesn't have influence on me. But the minute I went, Can you hear amen? Did you get know what I'm saying? As long as I don't activate, it makes no difference for me. Whether it's a dementia, or identity, or fornication, or lust, or lust of the eyes, or lust of the flesh, or lust of the, you know, whatever it is, it cannot touch me, it cannot make me unholy because I'm not activating. No, I'm with that. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what Christ said. You are in the world, but you're out of the world. Hallelujah. The minute I activate, the minute I go and attach to this, the minute I go and have an affair with this, then the power of death is activated through this sin. Thank you. Did I reach you? Glory to God. When you become born again, Jesus has cleansed you. Jesus has completely eradicated your sin. And it's not, once he's eradicated sin, he did not take you and put you in somewhere in, in a planet where there is no sin. No, 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 no. They have put you. But what you got to understand is, he did not put you in the world, but he put you in so called the church. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you're born again, you know you live in this world. You don't live in this world. You live in a place called the church. church the glory of God and Adam was in the glory and he was created and he was enjoying the blessing and the presence and the talk and walk with God when you become a believer when you come into the church and the house of God and the body of Christ you will enjoy the fellowship and the voice and every blessing as Adam is because Adam went in glory I'm going to be in glory today hallelujah glory be to God that is church that is the body of Christ. I'm not living in this world because the Bible tells me in the heavenlies, God has kept his church in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. My fight is not with the flesh and blood, but my fight is with the heavenlies, with all the powers of darkness. Because church is in the heavenlies and I will fight in the heavenlies. I won't activate the power of sin on the land. Come on, if you understand, you may clap off. Hallelujah. That is the power of resurrection. Jesus did. Activated the power of death, hallelujah, which was activated by man. The same man, the second, first Adam activated the power of death and left into this world. My second Adam came and he activated and he left in this world. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And when you become the child of God, you walk with sin, you talk with sin, you go with sin, you go on with sin, but doesn't affect you because you're not activating the power of sin. Glory be to God. That is what. 